blessing, Father. Please help me. All right, so I want to talk to you about living in the times that we're living in as Christians. We're living in a time when there's a line been drawn. The line is so obviously drawn now. If you watched any of this ridiculous business with this Supreme Court justice, uh, it was just so shameful what, what was going on. And then all these people are believing all these allegations. No proof, absolutely no proof. And even the people that this woman accused him of that was with, they all said, no, never happened. They don't know this man. This man was absolutely attacked and, and voted guilty before they had due process. Our country is turning into a place where if you're a Christian or if you are someone who's conservative, the left is going to absolutely do anything possible. They even said they were going to do that when they first said they announced his name. There was something out there that had XX. He didn't put the name of the guy yet. We're going to do everything we can to stop. You know why? Abortion. Amen. It's all about abortion. This whole thing's about abortion. The left wants abortion. I don't know why the, the super rich, Buffett and all these people, they want to control the size of humanity. They got enough money to feed a lot of people. What's the problem? But, they, but they're all into this. Bill Gates and all these people are... It's all about abortion. Abortion is the greatest sin America has ever committed, and God is going to judge America because of this wickedness. Did you know that in September they unleashed, they, they unveiled a copy of the Arch of Baal in New York? The Arch of Baal. Baal was a, was a false god that they used to take their babies and put it on this altar and roll it into the fire and burn it. It was terrible what they did. And so they had this arch of Baal in New York City. I mean, they unveiled it with Eastern, Middle Eastern music. And did you know that they took that arch to Washington, D.C. the day before they, they were began to speak to this man about becoming the Supreme Court Justice? That's, there's absolutely wickedness involved here. <coughs> Baal is Satan, is exactly what it is. There, the line between Satanism and God is so obvious. And people, you've got to wake up. Some people say, well, I don't care what it is. I'm a Democrat. I'm going to... You don't even look at the person. You don't know anything about it. Or I'm a Republican. You don't do that. You gotta, if you're going to vote, then know who you're voting for. Know why you're voting. I remember a number of years ago, I, I said, you need to pray and you need to vote your faith. You need to, you need to vote for the person that most resembles or who is going to do the best for God's people and for our nation. Now I will say we have a president who is uh, an odd character. <laughs> he's, a, he's a strange guy. But you know what I like about him? He's not a politician. <coughs> but the guy, if you look at all the things that he has done, actually he's done a lot of good things. But you'll never hear about it if you listen to some things. And it's not about all this garbage that's going on out there. Now, I'm not here to endorse anybody. I'm just saying, if you are pro-abortion, you are for the killing of, of babies. That sounds more like Baal than Jesus, doesn't it? And America is going to suffer deeply because of what's going on. And that's what that whole thing was about. That's what the whole thing about. And nobody had the courage. I think one person said, you know what this is all about? I wish one of those senators would have said, let's just quit the bull crap. And let's just say what this is about. This is about abortion. And that's all it was. And thank God they didn't win. Now, that doesn't mean he's going to overturn it. I wish they would. But the guy's got a record of being very straight on the Constitution. He's a constitutionalist. We're, our country is based on a Constitution. The judges aren't out there to make the laws. They're out there to judge. So it's really, it just showed me the absolute condition of our country. And then you got all these protesters. There was a woman yesterday who raised a rocket in the Senate, and then they had to take her out, 
and a cameraman followed her out. She goes out across the street. Some guy meets her over there and gives her some money. They're paying people to protest. Are you kidding me? And it's, they get busted doing it. George Soros. George Soros is behind all this stuff, but for some reason he, he wants to abort as many babies as he can. I don't know what it is. I'll tell you what he was. The guy was a German Nazi. True. True story. He's a billionaire and he's always behind all this stuff. We have a country, folks, that is absolutely controls of wickedness. Big money. You cannot get caught up in this. To open your eyes. We as Christians are aliens and strangers in this place. I'm an American citizen and I'm thankful. I've been embarrassed this week. If I was overseas right now and I ran into somebody, I'd almost be embarrassed to say I was an American because they're laughing at us. But I am, first and foremost, I'm a child of the kingdom of heaven. And I'm an alien here. So the Bible says we're supposed to be in the world but not of the world. I'm in the world, I live here, but I'm not going to be this way. I can't get into that stuff. But as Christians, you've got to wake up to what's going on. The Bible teaches us clearly that society is going to degenerate in the end times. The Bible says, God bless you, dear. The Bible says, as it was in the days of Noah, so it shall be in the last days. These are the days of Noah. These are like the days of Noah. I mean, my goodness. The, the worst thing that could have happened, I can't put, finger, put my finger on when all this happened, but in the 60s, you know, free sex and all this stuff, you know, no. No. Yeah. That's that's all right, brother. If the if the Holy Spirit wanted me to you will. Okay. So the Lord, I think it was in the sixties when all this garbage crept in and society just changed. And slowly but surely, watch and see what's happened. We used to sit together and eat as a family and we prayed together. We didn't we didn't live in front of the television in those days. But today, we have been desensitized by that stupid box that we look at, by these stupid phones that we carry. We're just absolutely overwhelmed by this stuff, and we've got to wake up, people. The Bible tells us, Paul says, that, that in the last days, there's going to be, people are going to become the pit of immorality, violence, paganism. So we've got statues of Satan in Detroit, big ones. Statues of Satan in Chicago, in public places. You can't put a nativity scene up there, but you can put a statue of the wicked devil with two little children standing there. Wake up. <coughs> when this thing is over, you will, have, you will be found out. You are either a child of God or you are a child of the devil. That's all there is. There's no in-between. If you're a Catholic, you need to wake up and realize there is no purgatory. And if you're a Protestant, you need to stop letting people twist the Scriptures and take it for what they really say. It's time for us to get right because the end is coming upon us. I don't know if it's going to be in my time or not, but it could be. The trumpet could blast right now. Where would you stand? How do you fare? Is Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? It's very important. That we need. So I want to give you a few things that you can that you can do in these last times. There's some things I want to give you some encouragement about. Say. <laughs> Number one, you need to order your priorities. The starting point is to review your priorities with, with, when it comes to God. Who's first in your life? Really. Who's really first in your life? Because see, God knows if He's first or not. Most people, I would think, would say, Sadly, in today's society, their job, their money, then maybe their family, then maybe down here a little bit, you might find God. That is not the model of a Christian. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be yours as well. God has to be first in your life. He must be. Because if this thing comes, and God's second, third, or fourth, and it's all about money, power, success, all these things. Guys, you're going to find that He's going to say, Depart from me. I never knew you. Just because you know the words to some songs and you know who Jesus is or you came to empty tomb, that does not mean you're saved. 
What means you're saved? You've repented of your sins. And how do you repent? First, you find out you're a sinner. Friend, you're a wicked sinner. If no one's ever told you, told you that, let me be the first. You are a wicked, wicked sinner. And so, so am I. This guy came up to me at my store yesterday. He says, man, I don't understand it. Why do some people have to be so bad? And I said to him, I said, brother, I said, uh, you're just as wicked as they are. Well, what do you mean? I said, well, the Bible says that all I've sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Somebody stole his car, so he, he wanted to hate on mankind. I said, if you want to hate on mankind, go ahead. We all, we all deserve hell. He got a little mini sermon. He didn't ask for it, but he got it. <laughs> Solomon asked for wisdom. Solomon got, God said to Solomon, ask me whatever you want and I'll give it to you. So Solomon said, God, give me wisdom so that I might lead your people. That's a great prayer, isn't it? Yes. His dad had a better prayer. David had a better prayer. Psalms 27, 4 says, One thing have I desired, and that will I seek after, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and inquire in His temple. Solomon asked for wisdom. That's awesome. David asked for God's presence. People, I'm telling you, the presence of God is all I want. If I have God's presence, I don't need anything else. If I'm in the presence of God, the wisdom is going to be there. If I'm in the presence of God, the power is going to be there. If I'm in the presence of God, the love and the joy and the peace is going to be there. We, if we're not walking with God, if we're not enjoying that time, if your desire is not God Himself, not what God can do for you, don't ask for His hand. Ask for His face. Seek His face. To be in His presence is the greatest gift that God could give anybody. The second thing we need to do is we need to stand on His Word. The Bible says in end times there will be an age of deception. Sound familiar? 1st one lady says that this judge uh, committed this rape 36 years ago, but she can't remember when, where, then, then, okay. Now the lady probably something might happen and if it did, I feel bad for her. But then these other people said, man, this guy was leading the charge of gang rape and all. What? There's no, absolutely no evidence. Can you imagine if someone were to come up to you and say, hey, Keith, blah, 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 and accuse you and everybody said, whoa, yeah, no proof, no nothing. That's not what our society's built on. <coughs> That's where we're at. Deception. Satan is the father of lies. And he'll do whatever it takes to destroy you. <laughs> this man's reputation is destroyed. His family. Two little girls. It was just the most awful thing. And you know what? I saw a poll the other day that many Democrats, and I'm not saying all Democrats are terrible, I'm not saying that at all, believe me. I'm not saying all Republicans are great, believe me. I don't like any of them, to be honest with you. I love them, because I have to, but I don't like them. <laughs> I don't understand how people, just because they can talk good, get to make decisions about yours and my life. How about we find people with integrity and heart and patriotism to make the decisions about our lives? That'd be all right. In the old days, that's what it was. Bob the farmer would get called a couple times a year to be in the Congress and help make the decisions to guide our country. Then Bob would go right back and work on his farm. <coughs> He didn't get a big pension for the rest of his life for serving one term. It's just a mess. Absolute mess up there. So the Bible tells us false Christ, Matthew 24, false Christ and false prophets will arise and show great signs and wonders as to lead many astray, even possible, even the elect. <coughs> First Timothy says, Now the Spirit expressly says that in later times some will depart from the faith giving heed to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons. That's what the Bible says. And they are doing this. That's why people start all these different churches. There's, there's all kinds of cults out there. There's a, there's a man I know who comes here. He was raised in a, in a terrible cult. They, they called themselves Christians. They were no more Christian than... It was just a terrible experience this man went through. And so 
what, what talk about an imprint on somebody's life and a false picture of who Christ is. And that's what people do. They deceive. And then 2 Timothy says, For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but have itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves <coughs> teachers to suit their own likings. And they will turn away from <coughs> listening to the truth and wander into myths. There was some so-called pastor, a number of them, standing there saying, We're all we're for pro-choice. We believe in abortion. Well, you are no, no more a, a <coughs> reverend or a pastor of the gospel of Jesus Christ than Satan himself. <coughs> I don't believe it. I can't hardly believe it. Man, it's good. The Lord doesn't let me run into people like that. Somebody might say, well, Pastor Steve gave him a spin kick. you got to watch it around here. Did I ever tell you the story of I'm Pastor Billy Jack for you visitors? Now, yes, when I was a young man, I, I used to train. And somebody went and told Renita. <laughs> One day I get a call from her at Heidi and says, uh, Pastor Steve, uh, somebody said that uh, you were in the church and he cleaned your parking lot. And when he came in and asked for some money, you gave him a jump spinning back kick. That's exactly what he said. I said, oh, well, what do you think? No, did you do that? I said, what do you think? I said, well, let me know who it was, and I will give him a jump spinning back here. But so, you know, that's how it goes. Somebody tells a story. And you guys got to weigh that out. Does that make sense? No, if he was coming at me with a stick or something, I would have given him a jump spinning back here. Now, number three, we need to believe in the power of God. I'm convinced that professing Christians are today deist. Deist. They, according to them, they, we're supposed to cope with everything with our God-given reasons, talents, and wisdom from the Scripture, but God's not a personal God. Everything, this is what they say, that at the end of the first century, the Holy Spirit was gone and God didn't deal with us one-on-one -on -one like, like, like I believe He does, like I've seen He do. Hebrews tells us, in Hebrews chapter 8, 13, verse 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. There's no way to cope with the evil in this country if you don't have the Holy Spirit. Absolutely no way. And when you have the Holy Spirit, you have a huge advantage over anybody else. The Holy Spirit tells you things. He prepares you. He equips you. He leads you into all truth. He reminds you of things that Jesus said. So we, know, we need to know. We must realize that the Bible teaches us that we can limit God with our unbelief. Jesus went to his own home country. And the word says he did not do many mighty miracles because of the people's unbelief. We in America are full of unbelieving believers. Not this last Wednesday, the Wednesday before. Now I've preached in Africa now four times on the on national radio in Uganda. The last time I preached, I got a phone call that there were four people who had, uh, had tumors disappeared. Now, I believe in miracles. Over there, I think they just, they're, they're prepared for miracles. Over here, we'd rather go see the cancer doctor. Now, I'm not knocking doctors. But over there, they have nothing. But they have faith. We, in America, what could be easily called unbelieving believers. We say we believe, but we don't believe. We don't pray up miracles because we don't believe in miracles. We don't lay our hands on the sick because we don't expect anything to happen. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They will speak with new tongues. They'll touch something deadly and won't harm them. They'll drink something poison and it won't hurt them. There's truth to that. I know a brother named Uma from Africa. Uma, I've told some of you about before. One time, Uma was arrested by these people because he was a Christian. They arrested him and his wife. They took him to this house. They took the wife, put her in one room, put Uma in another room. Then they came in and they told Uma to drink this cup of whatever it was. And Uma says, you want me to drink this? Yes. They said, if you drink that, you'll see Jesus. They were mocking him. So in front of them, he took whatever this liquid was. He held it up and he says, Whatever your power is, I suspend your power to kill. I drink you as tea. And he drank it in front of him. Those stuff should have made him sick. And now, 
He was in the praise of the Lord and singing and knocked on the door. How do you feel? He said, I feel like praise of the Lord. And he just kept singing for another hour. And they were thinking, what's going on here? Maybe we didn't give him enough. They came knock on the door again. He's still praising the Lord. How do you feel? What's going on? He says, I feel like if you don't open this door and let me out, I'm going to pray to the God that saved me that He blind each one of you for one calendar year. They opened the door and let Him out. And He was free. Because the Bible says that He believed it. I believe it. People, we need to have faith. What the Bible says is true. He can change a life. He can save a life. He can fill you with the Spirit. Everything in the Bible is true for us. These promises are for you. They're for me. You don't have to wrestle with addiction. Addiction was beat on the cross. You see that? Addiction. How come my life's not on up here? Yeah. So, addiction, sickness, all that stuff went to the cross. Now, number four, we need to be persistent in prayer. One of the greatest blessings God has given believers is supernatural communication. Amen. We can speak directly to God. Can you imagine? You guys that haven't come yet on a Tuesday night for prayer, you don't know what you're missing. I run into a lady the other day, and she said, man, I heard you guys are having some powerful prayers down in Earth too. I said, where did you hear that? Well, a lot of people are talking. Something's going on down here. We meet with God. I'm not preaching down there. We're not listening to music. We could. We just go after God. We're going after God so that God would step down into this community and just tear out all this filth and set the wrong right and make us the church that He deserves us to be because we're not. I'm not. You're not. We need Jesus. We need revival. We need to pray. We can speak directly to God. He desires for us to communicate with Him. He said, ask in my name. Believe in your heart. You'll have whatsoever you ask. Draw near to me and I'll draw near to you, he said. Sometimes people will say, man, I just can't really connect with God. You know what? I say, have you asked Him? I don't know how to pray. Have you asked Him to teach you? The Bible says we have not because we don't ask Him. If you really want something, ask Him. Ask Him in faith. Every time I preach now in Africa, I expect a miracle. I, I just know someone's going to get healed. And everyone, you know, that, that's national radio in Uganda. It's not Christian radio. It's just national radio. That's all they got. They don't have 20,000 radio stations like we do. So if they want to hear the radio, they turn the radio on, they've got to listen to my voice. And some guy translating for me. Powerful, though. Powerful. We need to pray. The Bible says, uh, Again, we, we have not because we ask not. Now, the third thing, fifth thing, excuse me, the last one is we need to rely on the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have to rely. Listen, folks. The Holy Spirit is the head of the church in, in, in down here. Jesus is the head of the body, but the Holy Spirit is the CEO. He's the one down here. If you're going to the church and going to a church where men or man or woman, someone's in control, they're not. Or if they are, then the Lord's not moving there like He could. Some people ask, why does God move down there to him? Because, because He can. Because we allow Him to. We get out of His way. We have no agenda. Anything could happen down here. He could step into this place and lay us all out. <laughs> he do anything He wants to. And I welcome Him. So do you. Some of you in this place, we yearn for the Spirit of God. Many professing Christians are afraid of the Holy Spirit, though. Well, I don't want to do... <laughs> One time I was praying with this brother long ago. We were going to a church of Christ down here. And this brother was raised in the church of Christ. And we were having an intense prayer. And this brother got up and ran out of the room. And afterwards I chased him down. And I said, brother, are you okay? Are you sick? He said, no. He said, my, my mouth started. I, he said, I was afraid I was going to speak in tongues. <laughs> I laughed so hard. He said, oh, really? What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? I don't like thinking. I don't like putting on. But if God wants me to walk backwards up on that ceiling, it could happen. Anything could happen as long as it's God. Some people, I was telling Lonnie today, you know, some people think the Holy Spirit is like this impersonal force, like the force be with you. May the force be with you. 
No, the Bible calls him the Paracletos, which means the one who called, who comes alongside of you. I, I picture the Holy Spirit as one who puts his arms around me and walks with me. And when this knucklehead wants to start hitting this way, na, 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 na. come here. My grandson the other day, now he, he understands now he can go up the stairs really fast. And then he wants to turn around, walk down the stairs. Well, he can't walk down the stairs, buddy, unless grandpa takes your hands. But that little monkey would get up. Of course, you know kids, you got to do it 15 times. So we get up to the top of the stairs, and he turns around, and he's going to try to go through me. And I'm moving to, wait, 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 I got something in my hand, you ain't going nowhere. And finally I said, Isaac, you can't go down without Grandpa. <laughs> but he wanted to go down with Grandpa. If Grandpa let him go down without his hand, Isaac would have fallen and got hurt. I was, in a way, being the Holy Spirit for Isaac. That's what the Holy Spirit wants to do for you. He wants to walk alongside you. But what we do often is, get away from me. Leave me alone. I know what I'm doing. I'll call you when I need you. That's not how it works. He wants to walk with you. He wants to live with you every day, every moment of the day. He wants to be your closest friend. He speaks to our hearts. He tells you things. I'll be in, in my store sometimes, walk by somebody, and the Holy Spirit will impress my heart, go back and say something to them. Okay. okay. Now there was a time when he said, nah, that's not God. Yes, it's God. I'd argue with him. I don't want to argue with him anymore. One day there was a woman in our store. I'd never seen her before in my life. She, I was talking to some people over by our, our antique area, and she walked out. I just saw her with corn my eye. And the Lord said to me in my spirit, go speak to her. So I went out the door and tried to find the lady, and she's gone. The parking lot's packed. And then a sudden I hear, she's in the black car. <laughs> wasn't coming from up there and there were some ladies my customers I said what did you say I said she's in the black car I said who the woman you're after I thought well, how does she know that so I walked up to the woman I knocked on her door of her expedition she rolls her window down and I said excuse me ma'am but I feel the Holy Spirit wanted me to say this to you and I said I can't even know what I said to her she broke down crying absolutely rocked her. And then when I went back inside, I said to the ladies, how did you know? I said, oh, the Lord told us you were looking for her. <laughs> Look what God does. He's personal. Now, they walk with the Lord, and they let, him, they let him walk with them. And so he could say, hey, tell that goofy looking guy that the woman is in the black car. <laughs> and that's what he does. People, we need the Holy Spirit. He is the one. Now, for, for a believer, if you believe in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit is active in your life. If you wouldn't come to Christ without the Holy Spirit. The Bible says no one comes to the Father except they've been drawn. And He's the one who convicts us of our sin. He's the one when you do wrong. Some of us call it conscience. But when you get saved, or even before you get saved, it's the Holy Spirit drawing you. Come to me. Come to me. Nobody wants to live in shame. Nobody wants to live in guilt. God doesn't want you to live that way. So He says, come to me. Let me show you how you can have your sins forgiven. Let me show you how you can have your whole life changed. That's what He does. So guys, today, in this world that we're living in, we need to be ready. But some of us, we quench the Spirit of God. Don't do that. And I'm praying today that some of you are going to give your lives to Jesus and I'm praying that you would invite the Spirit of God into your life in such a way that He can have anything of yours. That you no longer are in control, but He's in control. There was a man of God one time, he told a great story. He said there was a, a young preacher came to me. He said, do well, I and I have a great ministry. We have a radio ministry. And uh, we've got a lot of people listening. Our church is growing like crazy. But, but I heard the Spirit of God has done something for you. He was talking to this old seasoned pastor. And I want what you have. And, and the, the man of God said, well, you know what that reminded me of? Me. Here's this young guy who's, who's got all this power. He's already got all this stuff going. He wants a little more power to make his machine work. He said, it's not going to work that way. He said, 
what you need to do. He says, you know, so what you do is you slide over and you let the Lord drive. But he said, no, I know what I do is if the road, if we weren't going the direction I was going, wanted to go, I'd reach over and grab the steering wheel. So you can't do that. It doesn't work that way. He said, if you really want the Holy Spirit in your life, the way the Spirit needs to be, what you need to do is you need to go around to the back of the car, open up the trunk, get in the trunk, give the keys to the Lord Jesus, say, Lord Jesus, you drive and, I, and, I, and you take me anywhere you want me to go. You drive. You drive. You're in control. It has to be that way in the life of a Christian. He has to be in control. The Bible says, do not be under the influence of wine. Do not be drunk with wine, but be under the influence of or be filled with the Holy Spirit. The reason why the church today, the number one reason I would say the church today in America is so anemic is the lack of the Holy Spirit. That's what it is. Got people that are wonderful people, have beautiful singing, pastors are eloquent speakers, no fire, no unction from heaven. We have to have that if we're going to make it today in this world. We need to stand up for Jesus and we need to do it today. We need the Lord. Is He present in your life? Are your sins forgiven? If Jesus were to come today, are you ready? Because here's how it's going to be. When He comes, you don't start repenting when the trumpet blasts. Because when the trumpet blasts, He can't hear over the sound of the trumpet. And your sins will no longer be forgiven. It'll be too late. You'll stand before the Lord and be judged for your sins and found guilty and rightly so. And be cast into the lake of fire when it's all over with the devil and all his minions. Are you ready for that? Or, because remember what I told you a while back. This whole world, everybody out there that does not know Jesus Christ is dangling over the pits of hell held only by a slight thread. And the only thing keeping you out of hell is God's mercy. And if God takes His hands off you, it's over. So what you need to do is repent today. The Bible says, when you hear His voice, don't harden your heart. Come. Jesus is saying, I'm not mad at you. I don't hate you. I love you. And you know how much He loved you? That much. That much. Jesus died on the cross to pay for my wickedness. For everything I did when I was a younger man, when I was a kid, when I did today, He died on the cross. He paid for my sins with His own blood. He paid for your sins with His own blood. And the only way that you're going to see that side of Jordan River, the only way you're going to see the glory of heaven is if you have repented of your sins and turned your life over to Christ and allow the Holy Spirit to come in and begin to live for Him. The author